What does it mean to drink from a well that gives you living water? That's what we're going to talk about today in John 4. We start off finding out that Jesus was still baptizing, although it said that he wasn't baptizing, his disciples were baptizing, and the Pharisees were hearing about this. Again, they were hanging out, listening to John, because they wanted to know what was going on. They wanted to make sure, I guess, kerfuffles didn't rise up, people didn't rise up, people weren't preaching another God or something like that. So the Pharisees, we know from past Gospels, were hanging out, listening to John. But now they're hearing that Jesus is baptizing, or at least his people are doing it too. So Jesus left for Galilee, went through Samaria. The thing to know about this is that usually when people went in this path, they walked around Samaria. We talked in the past podcast about Samaria, the northern tribes of Israel, where everything from mixed belief people mixing like God up with other religions, that they were people who married other people. The unimportant people were left when Babylon hauls everyone else out for exile. What was left of the people in northern Israel, because they were north and more exposed to enemies, they got ransacked more often. They were exposed to other religions more often and fell away from God. Someday when we get into Kings and Chronicles, we'll see how bad it gets in Samaria. So then these people were at odds with each other. Samaria is a place where bad people are, people who don't really believe in, in people who don't really believe in God, who fell away from the faith, who not even are people anymore because who knows who they married kind of thing, which I don't think is the thing God is concerned about. He is concerned about people's faith. even building idols and their own temple in the north. So these were two groups of people that were at odds with each other. Jesus, because the gospel is for everybody, walks right through Samaria. He doesn't walk around it. He comes to a town called Sychar, which was near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. This is called the Well of Jacob. So this is a famous well. There's all sorts of things as stories in the Bible that happened here. This is where we believe that Abraham came into Canaan from Babylon. This is where we think that Abraham built an altar to God. This is where we think that Jacob returned with his wives and children. We'll hear about that story in the future. This is the place where Jacob bought the piece of land from Canaanites named Hamar for 100 pieces of silver. Jacob builds an altar to God. Sikar is a place where Dinah, the daughter of Jacob was raped. We'll hear that story when we get to Genesis. This is where the bones of Joseph were eventually buried when they came out of Egypt and where Joshua makes the covenant with Israel. As for my house, we will serve the Lord, Joshua 24. This is an important well, but here's the thing. It is important, but what did Jesus say about what's going on here? So Jesus is sitting down from his journeys because he says he's weary. And again, I believe this is another one of those Jesus appointment book things. He knows this woman is coming to the well. This is not a chance meeting. <laughs> so a woman comes from the well and Jesus says, give me a drink. Disciples all ran off to go buy some food. So he's sitting there by himself. You want a drink from me? You're a Jewish person. You hate me. I'm a woman from Samaria. Did you not notice that I was a Samaritan? He said, if you knew the gift of God and who was saying this to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. Jesus was talking about himself in third person. If you knew who I was, you would want me to give you a water that you would never be thirsty again because it would quench your soul, that it would bring up eternal life. <laughs> this is an amazing thing to hear when you just meet some random guy at the well. And the woman's like, well, how are you at this well? You don't even have anything to go drag the water out of. This is an important, and she explains, this is imp and she explains to him, this is an important well. This comes from Jacob. He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons. But Jesus is offering her eternal life and the living water. And when she hears what he says, she wants that living water 
so that she won't have to be thirsty or come here to draw water again. So she's not really getting what this water is, but she accepts the invitation and she's getting on the right course. She's thinking about the age of this well and the importance of this water. So Jesus goes on, you know, get your husband, have your husband come over here. He knows that she has no husband. He's like, you're right. You don't have a husband. In fact, you have had five husbands and the one you're with now, you're not even married to him. And the woman says to him, wow, you know, you're a prophet. You saw that. (laughs) Our fathers worshiped on this mountain. But you say that we should worship in Jerusalem. The Samaritans wouldn't be invited to go worship in, in Jerusalem. He says the hour is coming where neither this mountain or the one in Jerusalem, the holy mountain of Samaria and the holy mountain of the Jews, is not where either of you are going to worship. You worship what you don't know. We worship what we know because the salvation is from the Jews. I'm from the Jewish house. I am coming to save this world. And the hour is coming. True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. And she's like, well, I get that. The Messiah is coming, but Christ is the word in Greek for Messiah. And when he comes, he's going to tell us all these things. And here comes Jesus' very first, I am. I who speak to you am he. I am. When she hears this, she has to realize he's the Messiah. She invoked the Messiah. He got her on the right course. But he's saying, these borders, this mountain, the other mountain, those borders aren't going to matter. He wants all people who are willing to worship God in spirit and truth. It's an invitation to a woman who didn't expect to get an invitation, particularly from a Jewish man. So the disciples come back and it said, marveled that he was talking to this woman, like, oh, no, he's talking to a Samaritan woman. I'm sure that day after day, the apostles were just amazed. Oh, no, now he's yelling at rabbis. Oh, no, now he's yelling at the scribes. Oh, no, now he's yelling at the Sanhedrin. Ooh, he's talking to that Samaritan woman. Ooh, he's going to talk to that Phoenician. You know, I'm sure their inner gut is cringing at all the things he does, but they are witnessing to the kind of man he is, that he is going to talk to everyone about all of the kingdom of God. And it doesn't matter who they are, what they did, what path it took to get here, he is going to talk to them. And she goes running back to town, leaving all her jars there. Come see the man who told me all that I ever did. I joked in a class once, I said, come see the guy who just called me a a loose woman. She was proud of this. She was excited about that. And the whole town came out to meet him. Why are there Samaritans who worship Jesus? Because we had Jesus give this message to this woman and she went out and told people. She evangelized to people. She shared the gospel with her town. And so then the rabbis are like, well, here, we brought snacks. And he says to them, I have food to eat you don't even know about. And they're like, well, did, some, did that lady bring him a snack or something? What, what is this food? And he said, the food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to accomplish his works. Don't say that there's X amount of time for the harvest. Look up now. The fields are ready for harvest. It says the fields are white for harvest. This is the time. We're not waiting. We're not waiting for a special time. We're not waiting for a particular thing to happen right now. See that woman in Cana who just ran back and told her whole town about me? The harvest is ready for us to gather the fruits for eternal life. The sower and the reaper will rejoice together. One sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap. I'm sowing here. I am putting down these seeds that are going to lead to a worldwide worship of God. You're going to reap this fruit. comes in the name of people loving God. Others have labored and you have entered labor. What a hard statement, but essentially he is saying right now is the time to proclaim God's word, the truth in the spirit. We are to bring people back to God, no matter who they are, whether they're on Mount Gezerim, which was the Samaritan mountain, or Mount Zion, which is the Jerusalem mountain. Everybody, we are going to talk to 
everybody and offer this chance at eternal life. That because this woman went back and gave her testimony, told me everything that I did. I even say it in my evangelism class. We're meant to be witnesses, to tell people what we have seen, what we have heard, what we've experienced. That's exactly what this woman did. She wasn't a theologian. She didn't come up with some fancy speech like, oh, I got to say this and I have to say that. She just told what she witnessed. People came, asked him to stay. He stayed for two days. Many more people believed and told her, it's not just because of what you said to us. Now we've heard it for ourselves. We know this is indeed the Savior of the world. After two days, he departed back for Galilee, and everyone, it said, welcomed him, having seen all that he had done for Jerusalem at the feast. For they had also gone to the feast. They go out to Jerusalem to see it, and they knew what he did there. He goes back to Cana, which is where we have the wedding celebration where he made water into wine. And there was an official there whose son was ill, and the son was near the point of death. And so Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. But that official told him, come quick, before my son dies. Jesus says, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke and went on his way. So they continued on. He met up with that man later and asked if his son recovered. He said, yes. After we talked in the seventh hour, the fever left him. The father knew that it was Jesus who did it. You know what? And Jesus tells him, your son will live. He believed all of his household. And this was the second sign, also in Cana, that Jesus did when he came to Judea. So now we had our second miracle was the healing of the official's son. What I'm going to meditate about is this historic well. How many miracles of God were seen right at this very well? We will see it crisscross when we get to the Old Testament all the times of Jacob's well. In fact, I heard about it when I was in Israel myself. You think that, you know, they say about like, if you could be a fly on the wall or if you could be a spider sitting on this well, watching all of history develop right here at this well. And how important this concept of water has always been. Water is important to us in human because we cannot go three days without water. It is important for us to have water before we have organ shut down. Which Jesus is now saying, you want to have the living water that you'll never be thirsty again and that you will have eternal life that never ends. That woman, she wanted that water. She wasn't thinking of it as big enough. Sometimes our concept of God is in our very human. Oh, well, I would love to have water so I never had to drink again. You know, and I have to haul out to this well every day to get more water. If I had living water I never needed anymore, that'd be great. She's not thinking big enough. She's thinking about her earthly life. She should be thinking about the heavenly life, which she finally gets after Jesus reveals to her that he is the Messiah. We also see that many times Jesus did miracles and he told people, don't tell anybody. That was when we're closer to Jerusalem. This woman in in the Samaritan lands, she should go back to her town. And she did. And she told everybody. And the town came out to greet Jesus. What I'm going to pray about is to have that bold sharing of Christ that the woman at the well had. A woman of no stature. That's probably why she had five husbands. You're not married at that time in in Israel or Samaria, you had no standing. You probably couldn't own land. You were almost condemned to being poor. And in this case, she had five husbands, which she was not supposed to have. She is now with someone, not her husband. She could have been embarrassed, and she wasn't, because she met the Messiah who told her everything she did and also how to get living water. And what I'm going to pray about is that I always keep my eyes focused on the spirit and truth of God, the living water. I could focus on the things that are day to day and the things that happen in life. And I do. I'm a real, how do I fix my, I have a whole podcast about how do I fix my life? How do I make my life better? But I want to make sure in my prayers that I focus on the godly things. That's the stuff that is the most important. Not this kingdom, 
the kingdom to come. And what I'm going to share with others is the message of Christ. Jesus said it, but whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty again. Everyone, the harvest is ready for the reaping. And it's in the Samaritan lands. It's in the Jewish lands. It's in our lands. It's in every land. We are to reap the harvest that God has sowed. That God has sown? That God has sown. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I would love to hear what you think about this podcast and anything else that you have that you would like me to talk about in other podcasts. Together, we can grow in our faith with God. 